Hi folks, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice uh, and analysis. Um, I wanted to talk today about a supplement called DHEA uh, and the reason I wanted to talk about this is because somebody uh, left a comment on one of my videos a long time ago and asked me to, to talk about and give my comments on uh, this supplement so I finally got round to, uh, to doing this and um, what I really want to do is just give a broad overview of whether I think it's an effective supplement to take, uh, whether uh, I think it has any benefits nutritionally. Um, so what is it? DHEA, uh, dehydro epi androsterone, uh, is a, a supplement that you can buy uh, and it's a supplement uh, of a steroid hormone that is naturally present uh, in the body. Now generally the supplements you buy are the sulfated form um, and uh, DHEA sulfate is the main form uh, that's found in our plasma. About 99% of the DHEA uh, in our plasma is the sulfated form. So the supplement matches uh, the, the, the type that, uh, the, the form that is in our blood. Um, DHEA is produced naturally um, in the adrenal glands um, and DHEA enters the plasma and then it can be converted into another, a number of other substances uh, including testosterone, uh, it can be converted into androstenedione uh, and it can also be uh, converted into uh, dihydrotestosterone as well. So it, it can be converted into anabolic steroids uh, in the body and obviously testosterone is known to cause uh, mus muscle growth um, and have other uh, beneficial effects for both men and women. Uh, men have much higher levels of testosterone but women do also have uh, testosterone uh, in their blood. Um, and in fact, women get their testosterone from um, the adrenal glands. That's how they produce their testosterone. Um, so, and, and, and DHA can also be uh, aromatized into um, estrogen. So um, it can actually be converted into a female, uh, generally a female hormone, estrogen. Um, I think it's, it's converted actually into estradiol, which is obviously generally called, uh, it's a, fits into the general category of the estrogens, but it's estradiol it actually gets converted to. Um, now, as we age, uh, our testosterone levels, particularly in men, but women as well, testosterone levels decline. Uh, and some people have uh, obviously suggested this is the reason that uh, skeletal muscle levels uh, generally decline as you get older. And there is uh, a relationship between the amount of skeletal muscle you have uh, and your risk of mortality. Those people who have uh, less skeletal muscle tend to have a higher risk of mortality. So if you can maintain your hormone levels for longer, if you can maintain your skeletal mass, uh, you may be in a, a better position uh, to protect yourself from, uh, from, from death uh, and you may be uh, actually uh, be able to protect yourself from certain diseases as well. Uh, what we tend to find is those people that lose a lot of muscle tend also to lose a, a lot of bone tissue. Uh, the fat-free mass decreases and obviously those people are then at risk of, for example, fractures. So we know testosterone levels decrease with age. Uh, we know that that's generally detrimental. Uh, keeping your hormone levels high, keeping them at what they were when you were younger, uh, is, is known to, to, to actually prolong your life and make your life uh, actually uh, have a lot, much lower risk of, of catching a lot of diseases. Um, now the theory goes that because DHEA is a precursor to testosterone and DHEA levels decline as we age as well, in fact by about the age of 75, um, our DHEA levels in our plasma are, are about 80% lower than they are uh, when we're about 25. So there's a significant de uh, decline uh, in levels of DHEA as we get older and then there's also a significant decline in levels of testosterone. So the theory goes that if we supplement with DHEA sulfate, uh, our plasma levels increase uh, and that can increase our levels of testosterone which will have a benefit on our health. Uh, because it will uh, help uh, build fat-free mass, particularly bone and skeletal muscle, uh, and that will keep us uh, disease-free. It will reduce our risk of mortality. Um, a number of studies obviously looked at supplementing DHEA. Uh, the general dose of DHEA that's given in, in, in studies is about 50 milligrams, but some give higher amounts, some give slightly lower amounts. But I'd say 50 milligrams is probably, from reading uh, a, a number of studies in this, in this area, is probably about uh, what most studies use as their, as their dose. Um, higher doses have generally been given to men uh, because it's felt that obviously increasing testosterone levels in women is quite it can be a, a double-edged sword because you don't want to increase them too much because women generally don't have uh, very high levels of testosterone naturally 
Um, so about 50 milligrams of DHEA, usually in the sulfated form, uh, is given in, in supp uh, supplemental form in studies. Uh, and that does increase plasma levels of uh, DHEA sulfate uh, in humans, in elderly su uh, subjects that have been given DHEA. Their plasma levels of DHEA do rise. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't really increase levels of testosterone or free testosterone. Um, and this is the this is the main uh, problem with the theory that I stated earlier. Uh, the assumption is that if you increase levels of DHEA, that will increase levels of testosterone, but that doesn't appear uh, to be uh, uh, effective. In women, some studies have shown that if if you if you supplement with DHEA, you do get a small increase in testosterone. Uh, but in men, generally, it's not really an effective way of increasing testosterone levels. And this explains the results from studies that show that if you take DHEA, if you're an elderly person, if you have low levels of DHEA and low levels of testosterone, if you take DHEA, you get an increase in the plasma, your blood levels of DHEA, but you don't get an increase in testosterone, and you don't really get any change in your, um, in your body composition. You don't get improvements in body composition. Your muscle levels don't go up. Um, some studies have shown that DHEA is effective uh, on its own uh, at increasing uh, bone mineral densities. Uh, and there was one study in the, um, uh, the New England Journal of, of Medicine, and they gave uh, 75 milligrams of DHEA to elderly men, and that increased the, um, the bone mineral densities on the femoral head. Um, but there was no increase uh, in skeletal muscle mass, and there was no increase in testosterone. And that same study used a positive control of administering 5 milligrams of testosterone, I think through a patch, and those subjects that had testosterone did show an increase in testosterone levels, as would be expected, uh, and they also did show uh, an increase uh, in fat-free mass. Um, so, is DHEA effective? Um, does it do what it says? Uh, or do, does it do what supplement companies claim it does? Um, I would suggest probably it's not as effective as people uh, make out. Um, it do, probably does have some benefits. Uh, levels of DHEA do decline, uh, and if you replace levels of DHEA, uh, there may be some beneficial effects. Now, for example, if you take DHEA when you perform resistance training, uh, there does seem to be a positive effect, uh, but it isn't an effect that comes through increases in testosterone. There may be other ways that DHEA improves skeletal muscle mass. Now, two theories, two hypotheses that have been put forward are firstly that um, DHA can increase levels of insulin-like growth factor 1 in skeletal muscle and under conditions of um, resistance training that may increase uh, skeletal muscle growth. Uh, another theory that's been put forward is that DHEA can actually uh, decrease um, levels of glucocorticoids, so for example levels of cortisol which is the main glucocorticoid in um, in humans uh, and therefore it may have an anti-catabolic effect which overall produces a certain level of anabolism and increases skeletal muscle growth. Studies that have looked at DHEA uh, in elderly subjects that have exposed them to resistance training do show that they gain more muscle than those who are exposed to the resistance training but don't take DHEA. So if you're elderly, if you're wanting to improve your skeletal muscle, DHEA could be beneficial in terms of the fact it may increase your skeletal muscle, but it won't do that through increasing your testosterone levels. Um, in that same study where they, they used resistance training, there was an increase uh, in um, testosterone uh, levels in, in women, in the women subjects, but not in the men. And the increase was not that great. They still, at the end of the study, had relatively low levels of um, testosterone. So it wasn't that effective at, at boosting testosterone even in women, but it was effective at increasing uh, skeletal muscle and strength, and uh, in fact it increased the strength of the uh, thigh muscle and also the volume, suggesting that there had been a, a significant increase in uh, skeletal muscle size, probably um, over the entire body. Um, so what's the take-home message? Um, it, DHA doesn't have really any effect in young men because young men have high levels of testosterone, they have high levels of DHEA, and the amount of DHEA uh, in uh, the supplements is not uh, going to have an effect to boost um, the testosterone levels or the DHEA above really what young men have as their high levels anyway. In elderly men, uh, it won't boost. I don't think it will boost your testosterone levels. I've really seen any evidence that it it it, it would do that uh, to any great extent. Um, and if you take it on its own, it won't improve your body composition. But if you take DHEA and you perform resistance training, uh, you may derive a benefit from it. Um, is it worth the money? Um, possibly, possibly not. 
Um, I would suggest that if you perform resistance training, if you're elderly and you haven't performed resistance training before and you start uh, a progressive resistance training program, you will probably find that you have increases in your testosterone, your free testosterone and your skeletal muscle mass anyway. Um, you may get a small improvement from taking DHEA, but there are other things that you can take, other supplements you could take uh, that would probably improve your health more uh, and reduce your risk of mortality uh, to a greater extent. And I would possibly concentrate on those. Um, for example, if you took uh, whey pro, if you spent the money on whey protein, uh, performed resistance training, um, would you uh, derive more benefit from that? Uh, that's a decision that, that the individual has to make. Um, personally, I don't see, for myself, I don't see any reason to take DHEA. Um, I'm getting on in years now, uh, and my DHEA levels, my testosterone levels will be declining like everybody's do. Um, and uh, I don't really see any benefit from taking DHEA. It does um, have very small benefit, but the cost to benefit ratio doesn't appear to be that great. Uh, it's certainly not a miracle. Uh, it's certainly not what I would class as a testosterone booster. Um, the best testosterone booster, I've always said, is heavy resistance training uh, with a reasonably high level of uh, energy intake, particularly in protein. Uh, studies have shown that people who perform resistance training do get an increase in testosterone levels. They do get an increase in growth hormone. Their hormone levels, uh, elderly people that perform exercise, have hormonal profiles that are much more similar to, young, uh, to younger people, uh, particularly men, um, compared with those who don't perform any exercise. So exercise is the, as you get older, exercise is really the panacea of uh, keeping your hormones uh, in check. Uh, it will help you sleep if you have problems sleeping. It will boost all of your hormones, your anabolic hormones that will build muscle. Uh, and it will keep you really uh, in, 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 in good health. Just remember that exercise is a stress and if you overdo it, it can be damaging. But um, lifting heavy weights will be a very good way, I would think, of boosting your testosterone if you accompany it with a very high quality diet. So that's my th those are my thoughts on um, DHEA. I hope that was useful. Um, I'll put the link to both of the papers that I've mentioned uh, in the comments box below this video so that you can have a quick a quick look at them. Um, and if you have any comments, uh, if you put them in the, the comments box, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, I'll see you hopefully next week for another video. And in the meantime, take care.